Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and welcome to episode 7 of Bushcraft Basics. In last week's episode we had a look at backpacks and it was really just to provide the beginning stages of looking into backpacks for people who are really beginning bushcraft and what they can get for their budget. There's a whole range of packs out there and last week's episode is really just the tip of the iceberg. Something we will come back to later down the line as we start to put equipment in our pack and look at different systems out there that can work with different packs that are available to us. But in this week's episode, episode 7, we're going to be having a look at water bottles, um, a facility to carry water with you out in the woods or out in the wilderness and to be able to have a multifunctional item that you can sterilise water in as well, which is a very important system that you want to carry. And behind me here I have a whole range of water bottles, some pretty well known, and they're accompanying nesting cups as well that we'll have a look at, which can create quite a nice system for you. I've got two containers here in front of me. This one is branded by Maxpedition but manufactured by Nalgene. And this one here is a Guyot Designs 38 ounce stainless steel bottle branded by Nalgene. And these two bottles will contain the same amount of water, one litre or 38 ounces. There are some huge pros and cons really to each bottle. For me a water container has to do a number of different things. It has to contain water for me to carry when I'm out in the field, a minimum of one litre for my environment, which is a temperate northern zone. Not particularly hot, not particularly cold the majority of the time of the year. Um, so carrying about one litre minimum for me works fine and I don't really need to carry any more but being stainless steel I've now got the ability to go to a local water source or a water source that I find along the trail which there are many of in this kind of environment lots of little rivers and streams it's a very damp environment it rains probably for about 60% of the year on average so my ability to find water is, um, is quite plentiful and I can collect water with this bottle, take the plastic lid off, hang it over the fire and sterilise water and when it's cooled down, which is very easy to do, you just then place the bottle in a river for a while, stand it up in a small stream, it cools down very very fast and you put the lid back on and it goes back in your pack and you've got some sterilised water, not filtered, that's something different but you have sterilised water to be able to put in your pack and then carry on the trail or operate around a camp area. I've recently been to the Mediterranean. I went to northern Cyprus on the west side and I spent about a week there. And while I was there I did a lot of exploration into the mountainous regions that are around that area. And I also travelled to the northeast side and did some, some exploration there. Really just to have a look at the environment and um, have a look at some of the wildlife there some of the snakes, some of the lizards, there are a lot of interesting wildlife out in that kind of environment and it's very very beautiful. But when exploring the mountains it can be, it's very hard work, it's very physical and you're pretty much going uphill all day. And you get through a lot of water because it's between about 35 and 40 degrees out there at the moment which isn't even that hot compared to later on. Now that I've left it's probably going to go up to 50 there now which is incredibly warm. So I often travelled on days where there was a breeze, I wore a hat, I carried a lot of water, I travelled in the evenings, I stuck to the shade and uh, I was very sensible about it. But I got through a hell of a lot of water just going up some of the mountainous regions there. And carrying your water in a bottle like this, one litre, is nowhere near enough and because there wasn't a lot of water sources out there to take from and it was very dangerous to make a fire in an environment like that, bearing in mind the legalities as well. Um, it wasn't really an option for me, so this is where a secondary water source comes into play. This may be your primary one and it carries a lot of versatility and even though it's got a bit of weight to it being stainless steel, it makes up for that in the field, being able to be a permanent container that you can sterilise and drink from. But a secondary water source like this one was a godsend out in the Mediterranean where the temperatures were incredibly hot. This is a camelback, a military issue one. Water bladders like this are fantastic additional water systems and if you're exploring terrain you're not sure about or 
you're going up into the mountains and you're doing a lot of hiking, you're in a country you're not familiar with and you're expanding a lot of water all the time, which I was when I was in northern Cyprus, I was getting through litres and litres of the stuff just getting up to the, uh, into the mountains, even just getting to the base of the mountain through the, uh, the towns was a, was a bit of a maze and I got through quite a lot of water just getting there. So I hope that's helped just a little bit on the psychology or, or my take on it. Um, everybody has their own systems and it's really whatever works for you and through your experience you'll develop systems that you're happy with but the way I operate is I have a primary water system that is always in my pack, it comes with me almost everywhere, I can sterilise water in it, I can use a dry bag from my kit that's empty if I set up a camp area to act as a water well so I can take water from a water source, hang it around a tree at a camp, take water from it and sterilise so I'm not going back and forth and you're, you're sort of extending the capacity of your primary water source that way because one litre isn't really enough sometimes. But if you're exploring hot countries, you live in a hot climate, it's hot in England sometimes, when you go up into the mountains people have died going up into the mountains um, you know, from heat exposure. A secondary water source is, is really important and the great thing about these bladders is that if you just buy the bladder part and incorporate it into your pack, if it's empty it's nice and flat, it takes up no, no space and it's very light and it's there when you need it and you can almost use it like a water well a bit like your dry bag around camp and these things are very accessible as well so you can drink from them regularly and you don't get dehydrated because one of the biggest issues can be forgetting to drink or not feeling thirsty and when you're out in the woods I've seen it so many times on courses especially when I've been out for a week or longer people have rotten headaches they feel sloppy they make mistakes keeping hydrated is really important but let's have a look at some products specifically. So this is the stainless steel bottle that I use, my primary container which I've, I've talked about. And it's part of my cook kit and this is a Nalgene, or branded by Nalgene, it's actually a Guyot Designs 38 ounce water bottle in surgical stainless steel, BPA free. Quite thick steel as well, I've dropped this quite a few times. It's only been one occasion where it's fallen and hit the corner of a rock where it's dented quite badly but even then it's uh, not really a problem at all it's a very strong bottle and they generally don't pick up too much soot really depends on the kind of wood you use but very easy to clean you can scrub them or use the ash from a fire to actually uh, get the soot off but I don't really bother I just put it straight in a stuff sack because it gets used so much that I'm forever scrubbing soot off it and I actually get sick of doing that when I'm out in the field but you can see it comes with a plastic lid and the lid is on a lanyard and this is removable you can take the lid off and you can see it has a rubber seal and the lid is plastic and the water comes into contact with that plastic face there in the lid some stainless steel bottles are all stainless steel so the water does not come into contact with plastic at all which has some benefits but the lanyard comes off like this and the lid is then removable and obviously this can now be placed in a fire and the lid won't burn you can see I've made some changes to it, which probably doesn't surprise too many people. But I have a pot hanger just here. And it's just really made with a piece of wire and some electrical connectors that allow me now to connect this to a, a piece of wood or a pot hanging device to put over a fire. And then I can keep my water there and sterilise it. Even though it's got a nice flat part there on the base and it will stand in the embers, when you put pots in the fire on ember you will effectively cool those embers down rapidly and smother them and you really want a gap between your container and the actual fire itself. I usually sterilise water on flame because it's done very quickly and I cook on ember and it's done very slowly. But these are very good bottles, they have a wide mouth, they're pretty easy to clean as well because of that wide mouth so they can be serviced if need be and they have a lip there which means this sort of bale can be put on very very easily. Kite design bottles come in all shapes and sizes. You can see I've got the 38 ounce which is my one there and we've got the 21 ounce just here, very very tapered, not very useful out in the woods simply because it doesn't stand up very well and uneven surfaces are really the norm out here and spilling water isn't a particularly pleasant thing when you've just spent ages sterilising it over a fire 
and then you may have to go and get more. It's not something you really want to risk. It's the little things that irritate you when you're outside. So it's best to keep systems as easy and as user-friendly as possible and you'll have a smooth ride when you're out doing these kind of things no matter how new or how experienced you are. But I ran with the backpacker model for many years, about four years, just slightly tapered compared to this one here. Still quite large, 34 ounces, so just under a litre of water. And it was very useful. I put a pot hanger on it as well so I could hang it over a fire and ran with it for a long time. But then I spotted this one online. Um, a friend of mine told me about it, a website that you could find it. And I just thought it was the done thing because it contains a little bit more water. And it sits in my nesting cup very nicely. I've got a nesting cup just here. This is a Vargo titanium mug. And there's my cook system there. The lid goes on the bottom just like that and then it all goes into a stuff sack and it can just be put in my pack. So it's a very good thing to buy one of these stainless steel bottles because it's the beginning stages of putting together a very useful system. We've had a look at the guy at Designs range there and partly Nalgene as well with some respects. And they can be quite pricey, especially over here in the UK. You know, they can range up to about 40 pounds, which is extortionate for a stainless steel bottle. There are cheaper alternatives out there and I think if you're new to bushcraft, if you don't have a lot of money or on a budget, then there are a lot of options for you. Clean canteens can be picked up in the UK for around about 11 to 15 pounds and you can get a stainless steel one, which looks pretty much just like this Pathfinder bottle here for about 11 pounds off Amazon. And it'll be of an excellent quality, food grade stainless steel and very safe to drink from. So you don't always have to spend a huge amount of money. There are options out there for you and they're just as good. So what we have here is a cook set designed by Dave Canterbury of the Pathfinder School. Quite a popular one. And you see a lot of people using them today as it's a complete set that you don't have to build yourself and it has pretty much everything you need to get by when you're out in the woods or out in the wilderness. It comes with a stainless steel water bottle. You can see just there, you've got the Pathfinder logo on the top, on the side. It's pretty strong. It's not quite as strong as the Guyot bottles, a bit thinner, but still very strong and it should put up with most abuse that you give it and you just need to look after it as well, like anything. But it's got a wide mouth as well, so it should be relatively easy to clean. And it comes with a fish mouth spreader, which clips in and you can hang it on the fire. Obviously take it off the fire and leave it on the ground without burning yourself, so it minimizes any risks of, of being burnt. You've got quite a substantial lid with a good rubber seal that's not gonna wear down on you. So a good bottle to act as a primary water container to help you sterilize water and carry it. You've also got a stainless steel mug or a nesting mug. The bottle fits in it very nicely and that's quite a good set. I like things that fit together like that. Saves weight and space. Also saves clutter inside your pack, keeps systems organized. And this is a really good quality, very strong stainless steel mug. And you could do quite a few meals in this Things like rice and oats and various other things like polenta, decent carbohydrates and energy levels while you're out. Uh, you could also do little stews and soups and things like this as well. Or even drink tea if you, you want to drink tea and coffee when you're out in the woods camping out. So you could do quite a lot of meals in things like this and it comes with a lid as well. You can see the lid has notches on it. If you match those notches up with the holes that are on the side of the actual pot then this fish spreader can go in there as well and you can hang this on a fire and keep it away from smothering embers if you're just warming food or on the flame if you're sterilizing water so again very useful we do also have a windshield for a transier or specifically not for that but for any kind of fuel burning stove or even some wood underneath there if you're having a very, very small controlled fire, maybe like a covert fire, for example, you don't want to create too much smoke or have it too big, and your pots can go on top of that. So you could use that to sterilize water as well, or even just cook your food or warm up a meal. A good advantage of a system like this is it all fits together really well. So you can have something like this pouch here. This is a Maxpedition pouch. Um, you can get other varieties as well and it really goes together in a respect that you want to be putting these in on the top actually. 
like that and then putting the lid on and you can have your uh, your fish spreader just in there and it goes together quite nicely. So we've had a look at a range of systems and we've still got a few more things to look at before the end of this video which are different types of nesting cup that are available. I'm going to show you a couple of types of nesting cup. We've obviously had a look at the Pathfinder nesting cup which is a stainless steel one that accompanies the water bottle in their cook kit and I think this is a good product and I think if you've got the money and you're looking for something just to buy straight out of the box that's ready to roll then a set like this you won't go too far wrong with it at all and it's uh, very versatile out here you know collecting water sterilizing it nesting cups to cook and drink from as well so very useful pretty much identical to what I've got but just mine is comprised of different products I've got a guide bottle as you've seen and a Vargo tea light 750 milliliter mug um, this is probably in my opinion the best titanium mug you can get because it's of the thickest grade titanium a lot of titanium mugs like this Snow Peak one are very fragile and if you left that on a fire without anything in it it would start to warp quite badly uh, which I've had experiences before in the past but this one here I've had for a long time now and uh, I really do like it and it's got a good lip on it as well so you can add a pot hanger if you wish to so there are a number of different systems really you can look at I mean Geint do a range of, of bottles I wouldn't recommend this one here um, because of its shape I probably wouldn't bother with the Nalgene bottles, um, they just don't carry enough versatility. Arguably people say you can boil water in them if you need to, of course you can. You can do that with a, you know, a bottle, any bottle, plastic bottle if you, you're in dire straits and you really need to, but this isn't really about that, it's about putting together systems for going out and enjoying um, some time in nature and having good systems to, to use uh, that you can rely on and these bottles just for me just don't really tick all the boxes therefore they, they just don't qualify to go in the kit really um, I'd much rather have a bladder as an additional water source or water container to a primary water container that does the majority of my work when I'm out here but let's have a look at some of the nesting cups that it can accompany these things this is the Snow Peak 700 milliliter cooking pot or mug and this is titanium as well I've used this one for a long time you can see it's still got some remnants in it there and these are pretty good as well they're much thinner now you can see I, I mean I could crush that with my hand if I wanted to um, quite easily and, and that's one reason why I've abandoned this one and I stick with the Vargo much tougher you can actually just accidentally sit on these you know by, by mistake of course and you could just completely crush it or stand on it something could fall on it it's not too good so in a way stainless steel or a thicker titanium is the way to go but these are still pretty good but I just think for the money this Fargo one here you can get for around about £40 this here retails in the reams of 60s as part of, part of the mini cook set you can also pick these up for a little bit less but I think it's good to spend the extra money or just go with a cheaper steel one to be quite honest but whatever mug you buy or whatever bottle you buy sorry they generally fit very well, so the clean canteens, the Nalgene bottles, the Guyot Design bottles, even the um, Pathfinder set will all fit into these titanium mugs. So on a later day, if you wanted to upgrade the Pathfinder set to a titanium mug, there's not really no need to, but you could do and it would fit in fine. And it gives you quite a nice system then that goes in the, the bottom of a pack, for example. So the mug that I use is the Vargo titanium 750 milliliter mug. As I say, I think it's probably the best one because of the thickness and the grade of the actual titanium. It's really strong. You can put quite a lot of oomph on it and you won't, you won't bend it too easily, you won't break it. It doesn't have a thin bum like some of them do at the base. It can be really thin and they start to warp out and they pop in and out. And it can be pretty annoying. I've actually seen some of them pop out like that when on the fire because of heat and almost sit like this and they're very thin titanium mugs they, they do make it to a very thin grade sometimes and best to check a product if you can before you buy it in all circumstances but I like this one got a good lip used to have a pot hanger on it but now I generally just sit it on the embers because I cook very slowly on embers when I'm out and you can elevate it with a couple of sticks with a, a bit of heat but it fits like a glove on this guide bottle 
and the lid goes at the base. Basically this stuff sack goes all the way to the top around there. The lid can still be unscrewed, you can still drink from it even with the stuff sack on. So it's a good system. Oddly enough I have part of a jet boil set that somebody was throwing out and um, they kindly gave it to me. And these are actually quite interesting. This is titanium as well and it cooks food brilliantly on a fire. So if you have access to one of these, maybe you have a jet boil set already and you're thinking, oh now I need a separate mug. Just take the part of your jet boil set because this will keep it elevated from the embers and it actually cooks better because it doesn't flatten those embers out and smother them at all. Um, doesn't stop oxygen getting to them because of this at the base. It actually uh, allows it to cook a lot better. But this is about uh, 700 milliliters as well, right to the top. Comes with a rubber lid, so not quite as useful. But uh, you could obviously get a lid for it or make a lid somehow. But again, this fits any manner of bottle just fine as well. But you have this shroud at the bottom, which could be arguably more inefficient in some respects for packing. But there are lots of different mugs out there, and um, this is just an example of one of them. But this probably isn't the most versatile actually around the campfire. I mean, I, I wouldn't really use this. But if you do have a jet boil and you're looking for a bottle to go in it and for it to function as part of a cook set, um, you could not spend the money and just use this and um, use that for cooking your food. We've had a look at a range of systems and we've also discussed a bit about the kind of functionality and the psychology behind what you're looking for. My take on it, obviously. As I've always said, your experiences will dictate the way you move forward with your equipment and your skills and the further we go into this series the, the more kind of paths will open up across the main routes and you can take whichever one you wish and start formulating your own opinions and your own systems when you're out in the field and that's really where the, uh, the series ends and, and at the end of it you start to go off and do all these sorts of things quite competently and um, you know what works and what doesn't and it only really grows from there. Um, these are just my experiences and, and for a lot of people out there this system might not be functional at all because it just doesn't match their diet. One thing that's quite important with these cook systems you'll notice is the pot's quite small and some people fry a lot of food when they're out there. I don't. I don't really eat anything fried at all. If I catch fish or I catch something like a squirrel or a shoot a rabbit or some game when I'm out in the field. It's cooked over the fire in a very simple way. And I keep things simple because then, I'm, then I do them. If things are complex, you're less likely to accomplish the task correctly. And um, it can be more frustrating for you when you're out there because you've got to keep things really simple when you're out in the field. And that way you actually do them and you actually do them well and they work for you. So my advice really would be, depending on what your budget is, have a look at the links in the description below. You'll see a whole range of things in the description, things that haven't even been mentioned in this video because there's such a range of products out there. Obviously, I can't cover them all um, or else I'll be you know, walking around the woods with a trolley in front of me full of pots and all sorts of things, <laughs> which isn't really what the series is about. But. Uh, the, the psychology aspect of it and, and the perspective of what you're looking for is really the most important part of this training series. Obviously I show products and I talk about them and I talk about their features, but the, the most important bit is, is understanding why this works and, and what you're going to do with it, rather than just having a product and putting it in a cupboard and then only using it every so often. It's, it's, about, it's about understanding why you use it more than me showing you these products. Obviously. I show the products in this training series because that's what connects the dots, but it's more about the, the understanding of why you've got these things. So I hope this video has helped out and thanks for watching. Please see the links in the description below. Um, I'll try and answer any questions and I'm sure many of you will be able to answer questions for other people if you're more experienced in the comments section. And I'll see you very soon in next week's episode of Bushcraft Basics. Take care guys and thanks again.